song with Pastor Simon. So Pastor Simon has already begun his, the music. Okay, I just started the recording and this is December the 13th and we're live from the, the Kenya Dream Center. And uh, this is Simon, he's the pastor, one of the pastors where the dreams, all the Dream Center kids attend. So go ahead guys, take it away. Yes. 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 Can you sing louder? Hey, you are the same. Yesterday, today, forever. Nobody is like you. You never change. You never change. Yesterday, today, forever. Nobody loves me like you. One more time, shout and say, you are the same. Yesterday, today, forever, nobody is like you. You never change, yesterday, today, forever, nobody loves you like you. Love for yourself. Hi, Diana, you're muted. Can you turn on the... 
Are you there, Diana? Yes, I'm there. Hi. What's happening next? Hi. Name of the child. Is, we, is, go ahead. We want to have some of the caregivers give us some stories of the kids that have been rescued and uh, just a bit of their journey with, with us here. Very good. And do you also have the child Natalie? So we are going Natalie to be there. Which one? Natalie. Natalie. I don't hear you when. I'll type in. It's Natalie. Emily. Natalie. I type it in. <laughs> Yeah, we have yes. Natalie. Natalie. Yeah, we have Natalie. Where is she? Can we do her right now while I'm thinking of it? Because uh, that's one of the sponsor kids uh, of Unsurpassable. Is that possible, Diana, before we go to the caregivers? Oh, they're getting her. We don't have all the kids. We are at the launch, upper launch of the Dream Center, and we're having so many kids. So we, <laughs> we took not all of them, so they are getting Natalie. Do you have another computer? Like, is Alice at the, at the Dream Center? Alice is not at the Dream Center. Okay. We are having George's computer and someone else. Okay, if there was two computers, that would be good with so many kids. We have 67 rescued children there, and um, they're all making lots of noise, which is good. The kids are, we had uh, about uh, 13 grandkids at our house yesterday. Just 13 was quite noisy. <laughs> but uh, let us know when you get Natalie. Uh, other than that, if you want to go to the caregivers and go through your schedule, go ahead, Diana. Is that Natalie? You gotta turn your microphone on, Diana. Yeah, this is Natalie. Natalie. Uh, Rachel and uh, Mike Kohut, that's one of your children. We just found out. This is Natalie. Wow, what a pretty little girl. Do you wanna turn on your microphone and say hi? Hi, Natalie. Hi, Natalie. How are you? These are the ones, Brian. Oh, well, wait, it's really hard. Your screen is small. Can you can you text that to me? Yeah, I'll text it to you. But if it says the Dream Center on it, we can try to get the children there. But uh, there's lots of kids yeah. that are sponsored now, in the slums. Anything else that's your possible? No. Nope. There's the I don't know. It's Rachel. Is now uh, Diana. Yes. Diana, how old is uh, is a little child there? Natalie. Natalie is four. Is four? Yeah. What oh, what can wow. you say? What can you say about her? Is she uh what does she like doing and what's her uh, or what's her character like? She's an she's very outgoing. She's very jovial. She likes to pose at pictures and, and get new photos. I think in oh. our photos, she's the one who, who looks very good wow. and likes to stand right at the front. Well, tell all oh. the kids, <laughs> tell all your kids there that the sponsor family of uh, Natalie is online right there with all those kids. So all these people, you see, those, these are the sponsors of Natalie. Come on, huh? you want to say hello? Say hi. Hi. Can you leave a bit? 
Hello, Natalie. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Um, Diana, I just typed in another name, Iris May. Yeah, yeah, Iris I, May there. Yeah, she's a uh, Mike Mike and uh, Rachel, Iris May is, I believe, the child that your mother sponsors. Shelly. Okay. Shelly, we can try to get Iris May there online too, just you know, while we're doing it. And this is so so good to have a connection here. We can finally get 4G at the Dream Center and uh, talking to kids as, as possible, for, even if it's a try. First time we're ever doing FaceTime Live. Facebook. What is this? Oh, wow. This is Zoom. Well, first time we ever do doing live Zoom. The technology, the technology today, it's a great thing. <laughs> Let me know, Diana, when you got Iris May there. I think Diana needed an extra helper. Where's all your caregivers? They should be helping you so you can talk on the Zoom. <laughs> this is Iris. Hello. Wow. Isn't that amazing? Hello, Iris. Nice to meet you. Brian. Merry wow. Christmas, you guys. Thank you, man. My shoe My very good okay yeah. well we thank you guys it's wonderful uh, Diana, go Thank ahead you. with your schedule. Thank Let's you. Go. Diana, go ahead with your schedule with the caregivers and some testimonies. Very joy and very outgoing. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Diana, what's what's happening next? Yeah, we are going to have uh, some several kids. We are going to talk about them and with caregivers. Okay, let's go. So, we're going to begin with uh, Anita. Anita, you can go ahead. Hi. Hello. I'm Anita. Hello. I'm Anita. I have worked here for eight years. Here is Endo. Endo was born premature. She was abandoned by her mother at the age of one month. Left with her father who was a casual river and a drunkard. She had no one to leave her with or food to feed her. So she decided to abandon her in a building site where she was rescued by community and take and took her to children officer where we were called upon and we took her. Angel was malnourished. He was skinny and tiny. There was a lady who was living here who was called Julie. He took care for her for two months because of the state she was. We thought she would die. Her journey has not been so good because she had been in and out of hospital 
but by God's grace and you sponsored the continuous sponsor has made she had made it. Now she's three years and healthy. I'm very grateful for your continuous support, especially the bonus that we have received for this December. Thank you. God bless you. Well, thank you very much. And thank you for being faithful on the Homo Hope team there for so many years. And uh, Diana, what was the year the Dream Center started? And the Dream Center started in 2009, 2011, February. Well, we're celebrating, as you see by the balloons, 15 years when Home of Hope started in Rwanda, and then it spread over to other countries like Kenya. So that's a that's a good report. We thank God that this child is rescued. A child would be dead today if it wasn't for loving people like you guys and loving sponsors. Very good. Go ahead, Diana. What's next? It is easier to hear your voice. Your voice comes across, across the clearest, Diana. <laughs> okay. The, we will have we will also talk about Emily, Emily Love. Emily Love, maybe we can have uh, we know. can have Claire just tell her, her name and she's taking care of Emily Love. Then I will give the story for Emily Love. Hi there. I'm Hi. Claire. Hi, Claire. Hi. I'm a caregiver in Dream Center and I have worked here almost four years. Very good. And here is Emily Love. What's the little child's name? This is Emily Love. Zakia. Emily. Who's this? Emily Go ahead. Love. Well, Emily, she came to the Dream Center when she was like about four or six months. That was the estimation because she was very, very malnourished. They wouldn't be able to determine how old exactly she was. This, this girl had been left in a ditch of dirty water and she was naked when she was rescued by the police and taken to the children's officer. And then we were called and we took her. She was very tiny, very skinny. Her hair, actually her hair was growing in like, uh, it, was, it was very thin. So she has, it has been a journey of going to visit the nutritionist and uh, trying to feed her and bring her to health. And this is the healthiest, healthiest she has ever been. And uh, also when she came to the Dream Center, we discovered she couldn't even smile. But then we discovered when we put on music, like she just comes alive and she dances. There's a video we have posted with her dancing to a certain song. So we are very excited for the journey that she has taken and for all the sponsors that have continued to help this tiny girl. And uh, so we thank you so much for all the support that you are giving us. You want to say hi, Emily? Hello. Well, we really appreciate it. We're gonna send this to Ryan and Kathy who are her sponsors, sweet little Emily. And we're so glad glad God saved her and uh, most of these kids are rescued they're they're thrown away and extremely malnourished and Diana we have a, a nurse on full-time staff at the dream center don't we that's helping with nutrition and other things yeah we can have the nurse also come and talk about her her work in in yeah she's online somewhere we don't see you Faith, I don't see you. Oh, Faith, we, then you need to move closer to there so that we can see you. Just sit there. I was seeing you, but I was seeing you partly. Is this our nurse coming close now? Faith? Yeah, now we can see you. You can, yeah. 
There Come in on, the maroon, she's, her name is Faye. Looks like she's looking for her. Okay, can Faith, can Faith turn on the computer and say hi? It's muted. Go ahead, Faith. I don't know where. Is Faith there? Can she turn on and, and, and talk? Yeah, she's not muted now. Can you can you encourage her to talk and say hi? Hi. <laughs> Hello. Thank you. We're trying to go faster here. So tell us tell us what you do real quick as a nurse there. I usually I normally do a thorough checkup for the babies, or especially for those who are not coming from hospital setup. So when I go through them, I find out that most of them, maybe they're not in a good, well medical condition. So I usually either can call the doctor. We have a doctor that I usually work with him. Or sometimes I take them to the hospital, whereby they are being treated and given medication. Uh, when they're given medication, I usually do a follow checkup by giving them a medication. And also since food goes hand in hand with medications, I usually keep updating the food so that the children can be better with the food and the drugs can work well with them. I commuted. As, as Faith, our nurse was saying, she's full-time at the, at the Dream Center. We also have a doctor that comes once a week and then yes. she also takes kids. We have uh, Ben, the driver, who is on the chat here, and he often takes kids to the hospital as needed. And we even have an incubator now that costs thousands of dollars. So when kids are rescued that are extremely malnourished, we can use the incubator. Who are all the people behind you, Faith? Are, are, are they uh, all caregivers? Yeah, they are all caregivers. Very good. Can, can they all wave and smile? <laughs> now always keep smiling there we are a beautiful white smile shining and diana i think we have about 13 caregivers because we have to go around 24 hours a day around the clock um go ahead diana what's the next thing on your schedule yeah we, are, we still we still want to talk about another baby okay what's and the baby's I name Anisha Lee. Can you say the name again? Anisha Lee. Anisha Lee. Go ahead, Diana. Start telling us what the baby's, uh, the, the history of the baby, if you can. Your voice is a lot easier to hear. Yeah, Anisha is, uh, she doesn't like to be carried by everybody. Yeah. Ah, oh, there's little Anisha. Wow. Go ahead, Diana. What a beautiful little baby. How old was Anisha when she came to the Dream Center? Do you remember? Yeah, she was one week old. She's she's very pum pum today. You know what pum pum means? Full. Do you do you use that word there? No, pum -pum. we use chunky. 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 Chubby. Yeah, he has the pum pum. <laughs> Pum pum. She likes she likes to eat everything. She likes to grab all the food from people's plates. She was abandoned. She was left at the market, at the entrance of a market, when she was like a day old, and the police found her, and they took her to the hospital. She stayed in the hospital for one week because they needed to check and monitor her health. And then we were called upon and we took her. And this is one of the healthiest babies who has been at the Dream Center because she's not juicy also with her food. Uh -huh. She likes to just eat everything. <laughs> so we excited for her. Then she also started walking the other day. So she's also walking. Oh, she's starting to walk. Yeah. Very good. And I know, I know Lindsay is one of her sponsors. 
and named her Lee, the second name initially is from Lindsay's second name. So we are so excited, she's saying hello. Hi. She just said hi. So we want to say thank you so much to all her sponsors because of the support you're giving this girl. She didn't die. Imagine she was left at, at, on the roadside. Wow. What and a she's great. Very yeah. Very good. We're so resting. So yeah. Now, Diana, we went and visited the health leader of, uh, of children's health in uh, Nairobi when I was there in September with you. Tell us what the lady said about our rescue center at the Dream Center there. What did that lady say, the government official? Oh, she said that our home is uh, one of the best homes in, in Kenya. Like at taking care of babies, we run among the top, we are the top cream. Oh, she, she told me that we were the top in Nairobi. And yes, the top we are. Three, okay, and the top three in Kenya. Okay, well, maybe we need to go find number one and two in Kenya and see what they're doing. But we're number one in Nairobi. That's fantastic. So. Diana, uh, you're doing yeah. a great job. Um, yeah. Maybe we could go, while you get set with the next child, maybe Bernard, can you turn on your phone or your microphone? Let's go to Bernard, our first family unit. Um, ben, Bernard, can you turn on your, um, on your microphone? And one of the goals is that we place children in foster families okay. one at a time. But some we have four family units, and this is the first family unit. Go ahead, Ben. Well, thank you so much, Pastor Brad, for giving me this chance to share with uh, everyone else, with our sponsors, and uh, the rest of the world who are watching us. We are the first family unit, and we have taken in six children. The eldest is now, is, he's not here with us, he's in high school. And we are expecting them to close our school this week. Uh, here we have uh, five of the children that we have taken in. We have Yvonne with us here. This is Yvonne. And we have James here. And then we have Sarah, this beautiful little girl. And then we have Emmanuel, Mr. President. And then we have George. <laughs> and so we, before I say anything, we just want to thank you sponsors for making these children look the way they are. They are happy and they are receiving love from us as uh, foster parents. We are glad to have the opportunity to be family unit number one. And uh, we are so excited. Um, sorry, my wife is not here, but she's on the way coming. And uh, James just wants to say something here. Thank you. Um, I'm just, yes, <clears throat> I just want to say thank you to all our sponsors. Thank you. And then we also have, uh, George here who says he wants to say something. Thank you for supporting us. Thank you for our sponsors. Then we have Emmanuel here. This is Mr. President. He just wants to say thank you to the sponsors here. Thank you. Oh, your name. My name is Emmanuel Isaac, and I want to say thank you for my sponsors. Oh, we also have. Uh, this beautiful girl here, Sarah, she, she says she doesn't want to be left behind. She just wants to say thank you to the sponsors. My name is Sarah Vichichi and I want to say thank you. Well, we also have Yvonne here. She has really grown. Uh, beautiful girl here. She also wants to say thank you to the sponsors. My name is Yvonne Yambura. Thank you for my sponsors. No. Well, no. we are so excited no. and uh, we want to say thank you from the bottom of our hearts 
and we really pray for you, our sponsors. We know we don't take this for granted. We, we just want to say thank you. Thank you so much for what you are doing. The kids are healthy as you can see them and, and they are happy. And if this is possible because of what you are supporting to make them look the way they are. And uh, not just forget, we want to thank you because we have Peter who is uh, the eldest in the Dream Center and we are privileged to be the parents of the eldest uh, child in the Dream Center. He is now in high school and he came when he was a little boy. And now you are still supporting him well in high school. We just want to say thank you from the bottom of our hearts. We pray for you, what sponsors. God bless you. Well, thank you, Ben, so much. And Ben and his Rachel have been a, a house parents for nine years for those wonderful kids there. And um, <clears throat> Chris is going to share one of the stories now that's written in my book from one of the children there, or two of the children. There they are, Peter and James. And I just want to tell you my book, I'm hopefully going to be launching it this February. Um, so this is not public yet, but Chris is going to read a story about these two boys uh, and their story of when they were rescued. And this is right from my book. Hi everyone. Hi, everyone. This is so exciting. Um, as soon as I saw James' face, I'm like, he's in the book. He's right there. And I got him. <laughs> so um, here it is. You can see James on the left here and his brother Peter on the right. And it says, Peter and James are two of the first children we rescued. In 2011, at the beginning of our ministry in the dump, the guards we had hired found him starving and cold in the dump. We discovered that their father died of HIV AIDS and their mother abandoned them in the city dump, leaving them and their sick grandmother to fend for themselves. The three of them would look for plastic bags in the garbage to sell to buy food. Sadly, their grandmother also had HIV AIDS and was hopeless, and she was considering whether to abandon James and his brother Peter. We asked if we could help, and Homo Hope began sponsoring the two boys. Our goal was never to have lots of children living in an orphanage. The Bible says God sets the solitary in families, and we always want to create environments that are as close to a home and family as possible. So with the Dream Center, we implemented family units, which is what you guys just saw. Yeah. As we call them, um, family units, where four to six children are placed into homes and become a family together with a caregiver couple. And here's a picture coming up here. Peter and James stayed at the Dream Center at first and then became part of a loving family in 2013. According to their family, Peter is known today for being a responsible and kind young boy. He always tries his best and he is at the top of his class. He is a young leader in the church and helps on Sundays by reading scriptures in front of the entire church. James loves playing soccer and wants to be a, pol a policeman and detective. Maybe he can confirm that that's still true <laughs> <laughs> when he grows up and he has a very good appetite and eats everything. He also rarely catches a cold as his immune system is very good. He does very well in his studies and his teachers love him a lot. At home, he helps with house chores. Um, isn't that a beautiful picture? And what a great story too. It's so inspiring. Thank you guys. Did you guys understand me okay? Um, all the all the kids there. Yeah. Very good. Yes. Diana, do you want to go back to the next story that you have, and then uh, we'll go to family unit number two. But what a what a great story! Rescuing children, rescuing, rescuing children, children. Um, and uh, even you know those boys were living in the thirty acre ugly dump where there's big vultures, birds that that come and attack the babies thrown away in the garbages and we've rescued many many children that were thrown away live um so um diana do you have uh, another child to interview or then we'll go to family unit number two samuel if you oh. can be ready you're still sharing the screen nope okay diana can you unmute okay, go ahead yeah, we, we are with George, and George is going to tell us the story for Joseph Emmanuel. Joseph Emmanuel, who is that? Yes. Hi, Three everyone. Three years old, as mentioned. We have here Joseph Emmanuel, and uh, he was rescued uh, from the uh, trafficking. Now, child trafficking, 
uh, sometime back there was a case of people uh, taking up children and uh, selling them around. And so it's a case that we rescued, especially rescued him at one month old. And uh, he's here with us, uh, strong. And uh, one of the joy is that children that would have been taken, uh, you know, when people, those that are rescued, abandoning, uh, that are taking children and maybe selling them, uh, trafficking and all that, we realize some of them even are selling them at only at 300,000, around $3,000, some 50. And uh, they are also those that are, that are uh, um, abducting children for the sake of even using them for witchcraft and other aspects. Wow. But we thought that today we were able to move very fast and rescue him. He's here at the Dream Center. And we know that God loves him so much and he will live to become the person that God wants him to be. It's nice. a great thing when we rescue these children. Most of the time we rescue children and bring them at the dream center. Some of the time we think that they will die the next day, but the care, the support, the love and everything that we get right from the, 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 the rescue field and the Dream Center, the caregivers doing a great job, and um, even the sponsors helping with everything that is needed. These children are here, and today, someone is standing tall at the Dream Center. We are Very so good, grateful. George. May God bless you. Now, George, is this the story that you got a call from the government in the middle of the night and you ran over to help rescue a bunch of children that were found in, in, in trafficking. Yes, uh, there was another child that uh, was found, yes, on the trafficking, we went very fast. The police and those that are involved, we were able to do that. And that family, the people that were doing that are now sentenced for life. We are so grateful that we are doing this to ensure that children live and they are not used for anything that is not meant uh, 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 for, for that the purposes that God has meant, especially for these children. So, George, is this the first child rescued from trafficking? No, there was a uh, there was another child uh, that we rescued, but uh, because the court was able to process, we traced the family, and we were able to we were we were able to place them back. To a surviving relative, but the family that were able to do that are arrested and in now in prison. Wow, that's just amazing. For some of you that are watching on Zoom here, um, George it leads our rescue center, and we have a we have three signs in the dump and around the dump in one of the biggest uh, slums, Cario Bangi, there's like 700,000 people. And this is one of the signs that we have up. Home of Hope loves babies and loves life. Don't throw away your baby. Imagine being there, seeing that big, imagine this in Canada, a great big billboard saying, don't throw away your baby. And George, is that one of those numbers still your phone number? Yeah, this is the number. We have the office line and the hotline now. So I, the, it is 24 seven, like every time of the night. When I see that come up, I know there is a child online. And, and sometimes we risk, we risk our life even at night to ensure that we save the life of that child. Uh, who's the other phone number on there? Oh, the, the other one is office, and the other one, um, I, I have it. This is a line, so I, I'm the one I've been handling all the lines. Wow. Yes. George, uh, maybe uh, we could tell a story with Diana of one of the children that was rescued this, this year. Do you have a little baby, one of our last rescued children? If you, if you need some time, we can go to family unit number two. Okay, let's go to family unit number two and we'll come back to the one of the most rescued, the latest rescued baby. Samuel, can you turn on your microphone now? And uh, let's go to family unit number six or two where there's six children that have been rescued. Go ahead, Samuel. Hello, this is family unit number two. 
We are privileged to have uh, three sets of siblings. We chose to have siblings to make them be in a family setup. Here we have Moses. Then we have uh, Esther Laura. We have Rab Tumaini. We have uh, Peter Tumaini. And we have Anita Abigail. We are six, but one is in high school, David Fadili, the brother to Moses. So they always compete. They always, David and uh, David and Moses want to be pilots. So when David passed for his high school, David Moses wants to outdo him. So he wants to go to a better national school. So they are currently, we have two candidates. This is Moses and Rab. They'll be sitting for exams in March next year. We are very grateful to have them in a family setup. I remember when we, we had not started, uh, Moses and the brother David were anxiously wanted to go to the family setup. We had bonded while my wife was here. She was teaching them at the Dream Center. Hello everyone, how are you? Hello Beatrice, how are you doing? I'm okay, happy to see you all. You are our principal at our uh, school that you started. Uh, how many years ago did you start the school? It's now three years down the line. Yeah. Yes, and we are but, really doing well. But you started with children just reading them books and stories, and it grew and grew out from that. So you've been connected with the Dream Center there for how many years? Like nine years? Nine years now. I've been at the Dream Center having these students teaching all of them, and I really enjoy the work. Isn't that amazing? Everybody that's going to watch this online later, we need a, we need so many people. We have the, the nurse on staff. We have loving caregivers that cook the food and feed the children. And then we have a wonderful gifted person that's a school teacher that's teaching these kids. It's absolutely amazing. Uh, can you go to the book, Chris? Uh, in the book, we have some pictures of Beatrice in the school. And uh, I just want to say before I forget, I was there in September and I bought all you kids Ask him if they remember me buying them French fries and chicken. <laughs> we do you remember, remember that? Yes. yes. You want me to come back and buy you some more French fries and chicken? Tomorrow. Like tomorrow. Like tomorrow. Uh, they don't like pizza. <laughs> they, they, they want chicken. <laughs> chicken and Good rice is me. even their best. Go ahead when you're ready. Um, Again, my book is hopefully going to come out in February, and uh, Chris is pulling up a, a portion of the book right there that talk about this. In Kenya, Beatrice, who's online live right now, is an outstanding teacher who has taught the rescued children ever since the Dream Center began over nine years ago. She started teaching them with storybooks. Here's some of the pictures of, their, of our school, and um, I can't read now because someone's put a post on the thing. Uh, chat at home school. Some of the children were rescued as toddlers. So a play school in kindergarten became necessary. Uh, eventually, a few sponsors started helping. And in 2017, Beatrice started an official school. The school is growing. There are now 25 rescued Dream Center children attending and 10 children from a nearby children's home and the rest of the community pay a small uh, tuition to, to attend. 66 students and she has a goal of growing it to 150 students. Um, is there any Canadians that are online? If you want to put on your microphone and ask any question you want before we go back to Diana. But here's the family unit right there with Samuel and Beatrice. We have several schools in rural villages like Sharu, Rwanda, different schools where you can sponsor children as easy as as little as five dollars every month. Uh, but all the kids here are sponsored already, but we have many schools. In fact, we're looking at starting another school in Rwanda. I was just chatting with the leader uh, a few uh, days ago. Okay, thank you, Samuel. Thank you, Beatrice. And you wonderful children. I look forward to buying you some more chicken and rice. God bless you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. for the sponsors, for the monthly sponsorship. We are very grateful. 
Yeah, it's wonderful. Look at your beautiful faces. Most of these kids were rescued as babies nine years ago. And look at them now. Success stories. Fantastic. Okay, Diana, do you want to go uh, on the microphone again and talk about one of the most recent babies that was rescued and tell us the story? Hello. Okay. Uh, it's a great again here to share about uh, Geoffrey. Geoffrey is is four months. Uh, it is the youngest that we was rescued. Um, he was placed. He was found placed in the in in a charcoal like a charcoal bin. You know where people are selling charcoal and there's that dust. He was placed in there, and we were able to move fast and rescue him and br brought him to the dream center. He's here today. Sometime. Children are, uh, we have found children that have been dropped, uh, maybe some of them in a sewage, some of them under the bridge, some of them near the river. And these are just stories uh, that we are talking about. Even the ones that now we are talking about, the children that are now at the Dream Center are in the family unit. Some of them were rescued just hours old. And uh, as Geoffrey, as you've said, one, he was rescued at one day old, and today he's here doing so well at three months old. So we are once again so grateful for everything that is being done for these children and for the sponsors that are committed to do, but most importantly to the caregivers who are doing a lot to do this. This year alone we were able to rescue, but I know of course, as we rescue these children, some of them are found in a very uh, precarious situation and we, we have lost some of them, like just this year, I don't know how many children. Oh, we, lo we lost one child. So when we see a child live and grow at the Dream Center, especially when they are found and rescued under dangerous circumstances, we want to thank God for all that is being done. And most importantly, to the sponsors that have kept on giving uh, to support, to ensure that children are rescued and are cared for at the Dream Center. Thank you so much. What a great story of Jeffrey, and we really thank the sponsor. Is He has one sponsor that totally cares for him and sponsors him, and uh, we'll pass this Zoom recording on, and it's just a, just a great, great story. Um, Diana, what did you want to do next? Is there something else on your schedule that you wanted to get to? And again, we thank everybody that's coming online. You can go and come and go. We might go over time. We planned an hour. But uh, feel free to, to leave whenever you need to. But if you want to turn on your microphone and ask any question you want, I see Donna there from our old uh, campus and Helen and uh, some other ones have come and gone. Rachel, if you have any question you uh, want, I see Emmanuel, our sponsor boy in Rwanda. Very good. Go ahead, Diana. Or maybe we would like, uh, like uh, some of the sponsors who are online to get to see and know some of the caregivers, those, those, sure. those, those girls who take care of the kids, and maybe just to get to hear their, their story in, in just a, a short, like sure. two or three caregivers, yeah. Sure, maybe bring the... Uh, Diana, bring some of the caregivers, but your voice is the best to be able to hear. But if they want to say their name clearly, but uh, oh, I bet you she's the cook. <laughs> yes. Yes, Brian, how are you? Good to see you again. Me too. I am Mary. Yeah, she's going to just tell us briefly what that then I, maybe I can just uh, highlight something that may not be clear. Yeah. Yeah, yes, go ahead. I am, to... I am made a caregiver. I am for five years. And I am a cook at the Dream Center. I cook for the rescue children. 
and I love my job. I enjoy my job cooking for them, especially those who come here when they are not well sometimes. And I, I cook for them and uh, when I see them growing big and healthy, I'm so grateful and I, I just happy for that. And I'm just grateful for you all sponsors who give to support so that we can have food every day at this Dream Center. God bless you so much. Yeah, Mary is the lady who has uh, been cooking for the kids or oh, the rescued kids. She does a great job. Imagine cooking for 70 kids every day and not getting tired. And sometimes when we, the child is not well and the child visits the nutritionist and they give a different diet, she has to try all those things and, uh, and experiment on them. And if she's changing tomorrow and the next day, so she does that her job with passion. Like she does it, she doesn't get tired. And sometimes you come in the afternoon, she has finished cooking. So we are very happy for her and we are very appreciative of the work that she does and the heart that she has to serve the kids. It is actually because of her dedication, trying out the different diets that some of the kids like Emily Love that I just gave you her story have come up just like that because of her food. So we want to say thank you so much also to her. And we want to say thank you so much to the sponsors for all the support that you are giving to caregivers because of your support, because of your partnership, they can continue to do what they're doing. So thank you so much. Some of the yeah. caregivers have an individual sponsor and others, they just say, Brian, I wanna to give to the operation of the Dream Center and they're generous sponsors. And I believe that's the one, I don't think there's a specific sponsor for Mary, the cook, and we just thank her five years of faithfulness and we'll forward this to the sponsor that just gives to the general operation of the Dream Center that helps pay her salary, so, um, or her sponsorship. So that's a wonderful, wonderful lady. I was just there in September, 2021 and, and talked to all these ladies. Go ahead, Dinah, who's this? Yeah, then this is Virginia. Virginia can also tell us a bit about herself and then, yeah, we get to hear what she does and, how long she has been working with us? Hi. Hi. How you doing, Virginia? Good to see you again. Yeah, I'm good. Project. Big boys. I'm yeah. good. I've been here for nine years. And it's my joy taking care of these beautiful souls. They give me passion for doing it more and more each and every day. And we just say thank you for the support you have been giving us and the kids. Thank you very much. God bless you. Well, thank yeah, you for Virginia your faithfulness. Been, been working nine with us for nine years. And it means that when she started working with us, we were not as big as we are today. We were actually on rented facility and the sponsorship for caregivers was also very small. So she has endured and stayed on, she didn't give up. And today she can be able to see us in, an, in a new facility. She saw the building of the Dream Center come up. And she has seen a lot of kids being rescued, placed in families. So she has seen a lot. And we also want to say thank you so much to her dedication and the work that she continues to do every day. Some babies have died in her hands because having stayed with us for that long, you, you see babies that are sick, that are well, and everything has happened with us. So we say thank you so much. And again, we say thank you so much to the sponsors that have continued to sponsor caregivers for the work that they do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just noticed in the background, you're doing some renovations in the Dream Center. Um, 
if you're going to fix that wall behind you, there's some marks and I see the roof there where there's uh, some uh, drywall repairs. Yeah, it's good. And uh, we thank the sponsor who gives to even any of the, the renovations that need to happen. You got 67 kids that run and play in the building. Um, it, it needs regular painting, I'm sure. But uh, looking, uh, looking forward to being back at the Dream Center. I was going to be there this month, but with the COVID spread of this Om Omicron or whatever it is. Um, Chris, what is this? Do you want to read this portion? Um, it's not really a portion, though. Okay. Well, there's that. For some of you that might not know, there is the Dream Center right there. And, uh, well, there's, there's the sentence we talked about. The Dream Center has a good relationship with the Department of Children's Services in Nairobi. And our center has been commended and recommended for the services we provide. We are so proud of our team in Kenya. They're doing an amazing job. So look at that beautiful building, three stories. And uh, most of the children are on the second floor and uh, just a, a fantastic blessing of God. And we thank the sponsors that gave uh, whatever it was, like $300,000 to build that dream center. And then the money that's needed every month to do the power and the water, electricity. And even Diana's believe in God for uh, water treatment uh, thing because the water is so poor there that some of the children, their teeth are turning color and uh, better water would help these kids have better teeth. So she's believing God for that. It's like $9,000 or something. I don't know if you want to say anything about that, Diana, but what a, what a, what a, we just want to thank the people who are giving to make this dream center run smoothly and all the bills are being paid and the blessing of God is there. The kids are being cared for. It's just fantastic. Is there anything else you want to say as we start to wrap up, Diana? Yeah, we just want to say thank you so much for all the support that the kids at the Dream Center are getting. And uh, it is really, we don't take it for granted. Every, every penny that has come, the support that has been given, the dedication. So we are so extremely grateful. It's just that we are having a problem with the water that we are using the Nairobi sewerage company is not able to supply for all the needs of the Nairobi area so we find that some areas they don't have water and when you don't have water here then you have to drill water for yourself and when you drill the water the water that comes is salty water and uh, it's, it's, it's having some chemicals that don't work with the kids of the kids. So when we consulted with some people, with the doctor and some people, they said that we need a water treatment plant that will be costing 1 million Kenyan shillings. 1 million is, I don't know, that 10,000, 10,000 10, years. So to be able to translate that water into good water that the kids can use for drinking and it doesn't continue to corrode their teeth. So we are trusting God to be able to raise this money of have. We are actually looking even for local sponsorship, which we haven't, but we are, we are still looking for every corner that we can be able to raise this money because we know it is very much needed. You know, I wouldn't imagine a child like Anisha the way she's beautiful and the kids here, they are very beautiful like that. And that when they are grown, they cannot smile because of their teeth. And actually I discovered that what they look for in models, like those people who model, it's not the, their nose or their eyes, it's their smile, it's their teeth. So I think the teeth, they are very, very important. And that's why we want to be able to help okay. the kids in that way. And we are believing God that this is possible. But we want to say thank you so much to all the sponsors for all your generosity. Thank you. Uh, Diana, is, is the little girl Ivy, I-V-Y, is Ivy close by? Maybe as the last child? Yeah. Ivy, that's... yeah, Ivy is, yeah, Ivy, Maybe. Ayuma. Sure, try to get Ivy. And again, if there's anybody on the chat right now, you have any questions you want at all about, uh, we don't mind at all. Ask any question you want. And uh, I see uh, uh, Brent. 
So Carol, I think you're Carol. Hi, Carol. Do you have any Hello. question you want to turn on your microphone and say hi or ask any question? Feel free. Or okay. how Helen Prescott online. Donna. Donna from Olds. Do you want to turn on your microphone? Margaret. 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 You can even introduce your uh, daughter, Margaret. Okay, go ahead. This is Ivy. Go ahead, uh, Diana. Yeah, this is Ivy Ayuma. <laughs> Ivy is five. She's very adorable. <laughs> you want you to say hi? Say my hello. Do you remember some of her story of how she was rescued? Ivy, they were actually in some, there were some kids that were left. They were left, they were abandoned at birth or something like that, or like when she was like two years, together with other kids that came to the Dream Center, they came to the Dream Center when they were like 11 kids. They had been placed in another children's home that was very deplorable, like it was the worst. So they, when they assessed our home and they saw that the condition for our home is very good, and can be able to accommodate Ivy and several other kids. We rescued her and she came to the Dream Center. Hello, Ivy. We love you. Hello, I love you too. Hello from Canada. You have I some. Huh? I love you. Wow. She loves you. <laughs> she has some very, very loving sponsors that probably have her picture on their fridge and pray for her and uh, what a lovely little girl god rescued her and again yeah. with malnourishment and stuff we see her hair a little bit short but with the good vitamins that we're giving there her hair is going to get thicker and thicker beautiful yeah. little girl we love you yeah. ivy thank you thank you bye bye it's amazing yeah Okay, well, thank you, family unit number one who's online and family unit number two. Diana, we're starting another family unit in the middle of December. Someone's already bought all the furniture and helping with the rent. It's a wonderful miracle. And then we have our fourth family unit that's out in Bangoma, out in the, out in the village, about eight hours drive away. We rescued children. And uh, it's too bad. I was hoping Jeremiah would be online, but I hear he's in the hospital. He's not feeling well. Um, so we pray for Jeremiah to be better, but he was going to come on with some of his children. One of the stories that I love were two little children were left in the grass in our church. And the pastor came to church one day and he heard some babies and he walked over to the edge of the property, maybe about two acres. And along the fence where the grass was taller, there were two little brand new babies laying there. And those two babies still live with our pastor there. And this is many years ago. I don't know, maybe maybe uh, six or seven years ago. He was going to come on with those kids, but uh, I'm sorry, he's not feeling well. But what a great story. So we have four family units. I don't know if Anastasia is online anywhere. She is our full-time foster worker that works at the government. She's got a bachelor a bachelor degree, and she just sent us an email this week that there was another child being ready to be placed in a loving Christian family, and she oversees visiting the family and, and building a relationship slowly between the new parents and the child and doing a great job. Is there anything you can add to that, Diana, about the placing of children in Anastasia? I think Anastasia has been on our, our, our team there for many years as well, six or seven years, of my guess. Yeah, Anastasia, she actually went to visit, I think, a child that has been placed because part of her work is also to do the home visits. So she was supposed to be back by two, but we don't know why she didn't make it back. And she's doing an amazing job. Yeah, we were able to place two kids this year and also the six that will be going into the family unit. We are hoping to place more kids in next year. Yes. Placing of kids doesn't happen very, very fast also, because as you know, Kenya, uh, 
is that people give birth to many children. <laughs> so maybe they don't have space for more. But we are grateful for every child that gets placed. Yeah. That's a great report. Thank you so much. Chris has been working on a 15th. Here's our 15th. Uh, here's our one five balloons here. She worked on a 15th anniversary uh, video. Yeah. Do you want to introduce it and hit play? Um, we just wanted to start with the first four kids that we rescued in 2006. Just to celebrate how far we've come. We've helped thousands of children since then. And so it's just a quick like celebration video. It's like hey, one minute. Just maybe before you do. Yeah. Emmanuel, <clears throat> Emmanuel, can you turn on your uh, microphone? Emmanuel's with us right now. And he is our very first rescued child, him and his siblings. And we did a, a Zoom the other day. And you can see it on, um, on Home of Hope's page. Emmanuel, can you turn on your uh, microphone? Yes, I did. We helped thousands and thousands of children. It started uh, 15 years ago when I met you in your little house shortly after your, your, da your dad passed away with AIDS and your mother was in the hospital dying of AIDS. Go ahead and say hi. You're number one child of Home of Hope. Hello, hello, everyone. And I just want to say thank you for inviting me today. And I just want to talk something from... Uh, just one question about uh, Dream Center. So, uh, Diana, are you online? Yes, she's there. Yeah, so I want to ask if uh, the kids, they tell them uh, their story about where those kids uh, are coming from. Or the... the and maybe kids can grow up with their stories. So maybe one day they can come and ask you where are moms or dads. Hello? Very good, very good, Emmanuel. Your connection's a little bit weak, but uh, you were rescued 15 years ago and now you have a bachelor degree from the University of Kigali. You're a great young man and we thank you for all that you do as a volunteer with Home of Hope. And you're believing God to start a business now after your uh, degree in business. So it's a wonderful story. Yeah. Uh, we're we're going to play this video uh, right now and uh, see if I can get it going. There's a manual. Amen. Isn't that a wonderful little video? We just thank God for that. And uh, thank you for coming online, everybody. You're wonderful, wonderful kids. We love all the kids and we love all the different sponsors. And we thank you so much. God bless you. Uh, Helen, 
if you're still there, oh, she just left. Oh, Helen, uh, I was just going to say you could uh, have a, a prayer to close off. Helen, Helen has covered me personally and our family and home of hope for 15 years. I don't know. Sorry, Helen, I was just thinking of that too late, but uh, oh, there you are. Can you come on and give us one of your best prayers for all these wonderful kids and for the home of hope in Kenya? Turn your microphone on. God, turn your microphone on. There. Okay. Thank you. Thank there, you for right. being a thank you for being a champion of prayer, Helen. You're welcome. Um, it's so wonderful hearing and listening to all of these stories and the children. It makes my heart so happy that we have rescued. I, I'm so thankful for the ladies and the men and the gentlemen that save and work and keep these children healthy and giving them life that they should have. And uh, it just makes my heart feel so good that they are being nurtured and to see their smiles and to hear their laughter is wonderful. So Lord, I ask you to continue to bless the Dream Center. I ask you to give even meeting their needs. Lord God, that which will help raise these children to be healthy and to be successful and to be leaders and part of the kingdom. I just thank you today. Bless Diana in all of her work. I ask for even more creative ideas. I ask that as people watch these videos, their hearts will be softened to even give more. Lord, and I just, I ask for health. I ask for good health for all the workers, the children, the sponsors that this, the home of hope, the dream center, just grow to be internationally known and to be sponsored and that the hearts of people be turned to the children and covered. And this day I ask that the children be blessed, their day be blessed, that those who are in school keep learning and succeed. Those that are getting university age will be trained and become supporters of the kingdom in many, many ways. And Lord, uh, I'll even put a special prayer for Brian and for all of the staff that are working so hard. Give them health, encourage them. And most of all, I just ask you to bless the day. And I thank you that Jesus, you came into this world so we could save children. Thank you. Thank you so much. Again, God bless all of you. Bless you.